everyone, how's it going? For today's in-depth presentation, let's take an up close and personal in-depth look at the 2015 Cadillac CTS-V Coupe. And this is going to be a detailed in-depth review of the CTS-V. We'll start up, show the engine, get an exhaust clipping over the performance data, as well as show you a bunch of the unique aspects of both the interior as well as exterior. And before I begin, I'd like to extend a big thanks and shout out to my good friend Stan Blair for allowing me to film his 2015 Special Edition CTS-V Coupe. A really cool guy and fellow car enthusiast who also provided his Corvette Stingray for review towards the end of last year. And so, without further ado, let's go ahead and start her up, let her run. And as you can see, the CTS-V does come standard with a remote start. The Special Edition CTS-V Coupe only comes in three different colors, this particular one being crystal white, but also available is black diamond as well as phantom gray. Nicely paired with an all-black premium leather interior with Alcantara accenting and standard Recaro sport bucket seats. Now with that smart key access system, the CTS-V also has a pretty cool adaptation for its ignition switch. There's no push button or anything like that, but it's actually a built-in key mechanism that you would just grab and turn once the vehicle automatically detects your key fob. Beautiful sound from the 556 horsepower supercharged V8. The CTS-V's steering is a hydraulically assisted rack and pinion setup with a ratio of 16.1 to 1 and just 2.7 turns to lock, routed through a V-specific three-spoke steering wheel wrapped in soft, lightweight Alcantara. The wheel feels firm with grip bolsters up top and cross-stitching bringing the material together. The spokes are highlighted in black piano veneer with special V-bed badging below and your multifunction controls on the top two spokes with subtle bright work. While the CTS-V is obviously known for its insane power, the thing that really impressed me the most was how well it drove. With the magnetorological dampers, the car corners flat, it's easy to steer, and it soaks up the bumps without being too harsh, so you still get the benefits of having all that performance, but it does have quite a refined feeling ride quality. With the wide contact patches, there is a little bit of tire noise that enters the cabin. But all things considered, especially over rough patches of road, the CTS-V is a quiet car. It's also impressive the adaptability of the suspension to different road conditions as the ride quality really never changes. The only real difference are the two driving modes which I'll highlight a little bit more later in the video, the standard being Tour and the more stiff setting, Track. As far as the steering, it's stiff but not too stiff that it's not easily maneuverable in tight parking spaces. It delivers a nice amount of feedback and really responsive to the driver's inputs. I also really like the feel of the Alcantara suede steering wheel as it really adds to the overall performance feel of the CTS-V. With the V you have your choice of two optional transmissions. 
Standard is a close ratio Tremec TR6060 six-speed manual with twin disc clutch for easier, smoother shifts. If desired, you can also opt for this Hydromatic 6L90 six-speed automatic. With the manual, there's a no-lift upshift feature that allows the driver to maintain wide open throttle during a shift, keeping the supercharger boost pressure up for more linear acceleration. By tapping the gear selector into sport mode, it races the shift points, keeping the car more in its power band like when going through a curve. You're even able to shift the vehicle manually via the gear selector below or via the buttons located on the back of the steering wheel. A backup camera is available including blind spot monitoring and will automatically rise out of the dash if the screen is in its closed position. The shift knob nicely wrapped in black piano veneer, alcantara, and a leather shift boot. As far as your traditional automatics go, the 6-speed hydromatic available for the CTSV performs well. It's not quite as sporty or engaging as a dual clutch unit or maybe even the 8-speed ZF automatic now available in many of the modern cars, but it's still fun to drive. More fun in the sport mode where it holds gears longer and the funnest setting, of course, when you're using the little paddle buttons behind the steering wheel. The standard automatic mode does well for just simple cruising. When using the paddle shifters, downshifting provides just a little bit of a throttle blip to where you're ready to take off once again. And so, we're going to flip on the LED accented by Xenon projector headlamps, as well as the hazards. Of course, both windows are fully automatic. And we'll check out the exterior. The latest generation CTSV was introduced back in 2009. Only offered as a sedan initially, the lineup has since expanded to include a radical sport wagon and sensuous coupe. When it launched, it was a huge departure for Cadillac, even more so than the manual transmission only first generation CTS-V sedan. They've been diving even further into the highly engineered luxury performance category while creating some of the fastest, most powerful sport-oriented Cadillacs in history. Since the original CTS debuted a little over a decade ago, the brand has been shifting the direction in which they build cars putting less emphasis on traditional luxury in favor of an exhilarating driving profile with a look and feel that's unmistakably Cadillac. If you don't count the XLR, the CTS Coupe is the first two-door Cadillac has produced since the 2002 Eldorado ESC and ET scene. While a legendary nameplate in its own right, hearkening back to stylist icons in the 1950s, it was by no means a sporting vehicle. With a front-wheel drive layout, North Star V8, and 4-speed automatic, it was really best suited for comfort and relaxed cruising. With this new two-door, Cadillac has not only built a proper sporting car, but one that looks unabashedly American. With a bold, extroverted design, raked profile, and plenty of heritage touches, the CTS-V Coupe looks unlike anything else on the road. For 2015, the coupe enters its last year of production as the all-new 2014 CTS has already hit the streets. An all-new CTS-V is set to debut for 2016. For a final proper send-off, Cadillac has created a special edition for the V Coupe limited to just 500 units that will be sold during the second half of this year. It begins with just about every option available for the V coming standard, including the Recaro bucket seats, midnight sapel wood trim, microfiber suede steering wheel and gear selector, and the metal pedals. Other unique touches include a black mesh grille up top and down below in the front fascia, satin graphite wheels, red brake calipers, and red accent stitching on the interior. The coupe rides in the same wheelbase as the CTS sedan, which is an evolution of the Sigma platform that underpinned the first gen cars but it's dimensionally smaller in most aspects. It's 3.1 inches shorter in length, 1.5 inches shorter in height, and the body is actually 1.6 inches wider with a wider rear track for a bigger grounded footprint. Weight is also down between 20 and 40 pounds depending on how equipped. The chassis is lower than the standard car by 10 millimeters in front and 16 millimeters in the rear. Styling though is one of the most dramatic aspects of the Cadillac's art and science design philosophy. Up front, a bold power dome aluminum hood makes room for the supercharged LSA V8 underneath, while sharp creased hood lines trace the edges and come down towards the edges of the mesh grille. 
The modified lower fascia features large intakes that work to channel air for better aerodynamics and brake cooling. The sides are mostly uninterrupted aside from a few lines and scallops, the primary being the lines coming off the fender vent which carries on towards the rear before blending into the rear quarters. The high belt line and taller rear give it a classic hot rod proportion, while the nearly flat rear roof and glass flow into a slender, vertical LED set of tail lamps and a swept up third brake light, itself acting as an integrated spoiler. The spoiler's sharp points and middle edge visually carries itself down to the twin polished exhaust, creating almost a mirrored effect with perfect symmetry between both sides. The CTSV's stellar handling and ride quality owes its thanks to GM's Magnetorological Shock Absorbers, or Magnetic Ride Control, standard equipment for all V-cars. This renowned technology works to reduce heave, pitch, and roll to help give the best balance between ride and handling on any road surface. It uses magnetically charged fluid that adjusts the damping level proportional to the fluid's viscosity, up to a thousand times per second. While the V is rear-wheel drive only, it's been adapted for Cadillac's other all-wheel drive V-Sport variants, and now even available in the 2015 Escalade in addition to other cars in the GM profile. There are two modes, Tour and Sport, which dial up the firmness and agility respectively, tuned specifically for the V in order to decrease body roll compared to the standard cars. This CTS-V features a set of staggered, forged aluminum alloy wheels finished in satin black that measure 19 by 9 inches in front and 19 by 9 and a half inches in the rear, wrapped in sticky, high-performing Michelin Pilot Sport PS2 tires, 255-40s in front and 285-35s in the rear. With this tire and suspension setup, it's been tested to pull upwards of .93G in lateral cornering forces. With all that power, a car definitely needs to be able to stop well. Luckily, the CTS-V features four-wheel internally ventilated Brembo brakes that measure 15 by 1.26 inches in front and six piston calipers, while the rear consists of 14.7 by 1.1 inch discs clamped by four piston calipers. With this setup, the car is able to stop from 60 miles an hour at as little as 107 feet. Underneath, a fully independent suspension provides the necessary support with double wishbones and coil springs both front and rear, in addition to the magnetorological adaptive dampers and the uprated stabilizer bars. Overall length is 188.5 inches with a width of 74.1 inches and a height of 56 inches riding on a 113.4 inch wheelbase. Total curb weight as you see here is around 4,217 pounds. So let's go and pop the hood. The CTSV's insane power is derived from an all-aluminum, supercharged and intercooled 6.2 liter LSA V8. It's Eaton R1900 supercharger putting out 9 PSI of max boost. It's the same engine that powers all CTSV variants and also powers the Chevrolet Camaro ZL1. Featuring a classic pushrod design with two valves per cylinder, hydraulic lifters, port fuel injection and a 9.1 compression ratio. Total output consists of 556 horsepower, a 6,100 RPM, and a 6,200 RPM redline, with 551 pound-feet of torque at 3,800 RPM. This translates to 0 to 60 times as low as 3.9 seconds, while quarter mile flashes by in 12 and a half seconds around 117 miles an hour. Top speed is claimed to be a drag limited 191 miles an hour. As far as fuel economy, the CTSV carries an 18 gallon tank and requires premium fuel. EPA mileage estimates range between 14 miles to a gallon in the city and 19 on the highway. When the all-new CTS Coupe debuted, it represented the best Cadillac had to offer in terms of features, build quality, and comfort. It's a little dated by 2014-2015 standards as the new 2014 CTS is all new, but the design really has held up well in my opinion, still looking fresh, stylish, and luxurious. The V Special Edition, like I said earlier, has color accent stitching that comes across the doors, areas of the dash, and other pieces of the interior. The microfiber suede perforated trim comes across the middle portion of the door where you have a stitched armrest and your electronic door actuator. The beautiful midnight sapel wood trim up top, modest black piano veneer spearheading the speaker grill, and all of your power accessories including two-person memory are located on the door. The optional Recaro bucket seats, standard on this special edition, is almost a no-brainer. They provide a fantastic amount of comfort and a lot of lateral support if you're taking a corner sharply. You have 14-way power adjustment down below, including 4-way power lumbar, as well as adjustable pneumatic side bolsters. 
not to mention a manual thigh extension located up front. The middle is finished in perforated microfiber suede keeping everything nice and ventilated and grippy. And it's also a nice attention to detail with the color accent stitching and special V badging located in the seat backs. The headrests are adjustable but the seat belts are fixed in the B pillars. Of course, side curtain airbags all the way around. Unique V aluminum door sill entry guards down below as well as aluminum sport pedals. The steering wheel is power tilt telescoping and it also has an auto tilt feature. The curving dash seamlessly blends into the doors and flows into the center console. Also finished in plenty of padded trim with the accent stitching up top and subtle touches of chrome across some of the buttons, the dials, as well as the air vents keeping a little bit of a classy touch, not to mention an optional sunroof. So let's go ahead and see as she sounds. Gotta love the classic whine of a supercharger. So we're going to shut her up, soft closing doors. The CTS-V comes standard with a premium 10 speaker Bose audio system with a hard drive based navigation setup that actually has 10 gigabytes reserved for music storage, all with a nice hidden LCD screen that automatically rises out of the dash by pressing the little nav button in the center stack. While it's primarily a touch-based system, many of your shortcut keys and commands are located in the button stack beneath the analog clock for easy access if you don't want to have to go through the system while driving. pillars with your side curtain airbags, as well as an illuminated vanity mirror. Standard auto dimming rear view mirror with your OnStar controls located right beneath, whereas in the top stack you have your three position garage home link, as well as LED interior illumination. One of the few optional extras is a sunroof, but since the CTSV has a pretty short roof line, it doesn't have enough room for a traditional sunroof to slide back into a housing. So. While it is fully automatic as far as the sunshade and stuff goes, the glass itself only rises up to act as a little vent. Now this system is a little bit more user friendly as far as figuring out the functionality of it versus Cadillac's new Q system, whereas it's a little bit outdated as far as like the modern infotainment systems out, sometimes simpler is a little bit better. So right now, we're in our main audio screen where we have all the different media options located up top, including your radio, XM satellite radio, CD, stuff you have on the hard drive, auxiliary, iPod integration. All of your song, artist, playlist information will automatically show up there, as well as any album artwork, if available, powered by Grace Note. Your outside temperature located up top, and you can also shuffle the songs. If you hit track list, it'll bring up a list of the available tracks, which you can then scroll through, or use the little wheel I showed you a second ago, to make it a little bit easier, push down when you select an option that you want. 
We'll switch it on over to navigation where it'll bring up the full map with real-time traffic updates and you can also dual yield the screen with your radio data. Traffic in that other top tab. And down below is your compass. You can look up points of interest, zoom in and out and more. But if you hit the destination input, that's where you put in your address. Pretty self-explanatory. I also like the transitions between the different menus, how they just kind of fade in and out. And just like you could put preset stations with your radio, you can also do that with the navigation when activated. If you hit the configure button, it's all the personalizable options for the system, including all of your audio adjustments, activating the center point surround sound, radio, navigation, how to use all the different features, and adjusting your clock. If you hit the Info button, it brings up your real-time weather updates with current conditions, extended forecasts, and even warnings. Hit the Speech tab, and it'll show you how to use all the voice recognition commands. Now while you're in your radio screen, or XM like I have it in right now, you have your preset stations down below there, of course, all the song, station information, and you can also search by category. And if you didn't want to go to the configuration screen to adjust your audio settings, all you have to do is push the tune button. It'll automatically bring up all of those functions. As we continue down the flowing center console, beneath each of the center air registers is your dual zone electronic automatic climate control. With little digital displays on either side, your temperature adjustment, and three-stage heated and ventilated seating. The rest of the commands are in the center here, including automatic, recycling, front and rear defrost, different zones, as well as fan speed off to the left. And right above that are all the shortcut keys for the infotainment system like we touched on earlier, including your navigation, audio, repeating navigation commands, and destination. Hit the menu button to bring up all the available tracks like we showed you earlier. Favorite, seek, rewind, fast forward, play, pause, record to store things on the system or the hard drive, deleting commands, configuration, info, and your CD player right beneath that. And up top, right in between the two main radio knobs, is an elegant analog clock, all accented in chrome bright work. Right beneath it is where you close the screen, if you didn't want it sticking up. And there's also a day-night mode. Your adaptive damper settings for both tour and sport modes are activated via this button with the magnetic ride control suspension. Continuing on down, you have a little storage tray with a 12 volt power outlet, the midnight sapel wood trim and black piano veneer coming across the center console, electronic parking brake, and two cup holders. The center console is padded and accented in the stitching and is two tier so you have lower storage and upper. As far as the steering wheel, on the right hand side are your radio controls and hands free telephone, and the left is your cruise control and turning off your trash control. And of course, a three gauge pod with chrome trim, red needles, and white letters. There's also red lights that follow the tachometer and speedometer needle as you go faster down the road. Off on the right hand side is your temperature, fuel, and supercharged boost pressure in the bottom. Your driver information system is located here and shows up in the little digital display beneath the speedometer. With the trip, fuel data, vehicle information, personalizable options, and more. Alrighty. I'm going to shut her down. And we're going to check out the back seat. To gain access to the back seat, there's a release lever on the sides of both the front seats. So you just pull it back and then hit this little powered button to slide the seat forward. You do have storage pockets on the front seats and a nicely appointed rear area. With the new age Cadillac V badging on top of the seats, little center console, and reading lamps. Attention to detail is also quite good with all the padded materials and suede accenting carrying onto the rear passengers. Now like I showed you a second ago, to gain access to the back seat you're going to pull the little release lever 
and then press the power actuator button to slide the seat forward. And then you're going to have to grab the seat belt and hoist it up and slide on in. Now, if you haven't noticed by now, if you're going to be hauling passengers more often than not, the CTS Coupe is not going to be your best bet because it is quite cramped back here. I mean, it's to be expected with the proportions, but... Now, I'm around 5'10", 5 5'11", 5 and with a comfortable seating position for myself up front, my knees are just barely touching the back of the seats if I spread them out a little bit. Headroom pretty much isn't there. Um, I'm basically hitting the glass back here if I don't push my head forward and hit the headliner. So, you can definitely sit back here if you're shorter than I am, but it's really not made for passenger hauling but as far as a back seat in a coupe it's actually really nice back here up top you have all the same padded trim like you have on the front doors as well as the red color accent stitching the b pillars are padded the c pillars are padded you have side curtain airbags in the rear there are coat hooks up top here if you don't have rear passengers and you need to haul some extra clothing items the alcantara suede comes across the middle portion of the door with perforated trim padded armrest, you have a center console with the black piano veneer, and two cup holders. So as far as appointments, it's like I said, it's really good. The seats are also pretty comfortable. They're basically bucket seats. So really it hugs your body in quite well. And there's plenty of padding in the lower cushion. And there's even a little bit of lower back support. So if you're shorter than I am, or maybe five and a half feet or so, this could be a comfortable seating position for you. There's no midsection that comes down for like a trunk pass-through, but both of these seats do fold down to allow extra storage space, which I'll show in just a second. To keep it a little bit more comfortable, there are two air registers back here directing air to both of the rear passengers, as well as a little bit of storage and a 12-volt power outlet. Up top, you also have two reading lamps, but to get out, it's basically the reverse. Just pull that little flap, push the button to make the seat go forward, now in a lot of coupes, they have the seatbelt holders on the front seats, so when you pull it forward, they automatically raise it up for you to allow it to be a little bit easier. Well, the CTS coupe doesn't have that, and that would make it a whole lot easier, but it's kind of hard to complain because since this is the last year of production, it's kind of a, a moot point, so to speak. But So let's go and check out the rest of the vehicle, shall we? Now for its size and proportions, the CTS Coupe does have a respectable amount of trunk space. It's 10.5 cubic feet. You can also position a cargo net in the middle if you need something a little bit more secure. Really though, the biggest hindrance though are the big arms that swing down into the trunk when it's closed. So if you have something fragile on the edges of the trunk, you might want to be careful because they will come down and impede some of the trunk space. But thankfully you can fold the 60-40 split rear seat if you need more cargo space. The passenger seat also features the same power adjustments, including the adjustable bolstering, as you find in the driver's seat. You also have a padded lockable glove box, lined in felt, with illumination, two-tier, modest space. The Cadillac CTS V Coupe just oozes a certain cool factor, bringing about a different take on domestic luxury and performance. With more emphasis on handling and style, this only represents the beginning as to what appears to be a really exciting future. Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed the in-depth look at the 2015 Cadillac CTS-V Coupe. Be sure to stay tuned next time, there's a lot more where that came from. Take care everybody.